Good afternoon, welcome to Grain TV. My name is Cody Bills. Today we had a WASDU report out at 11 o'clock Central Standard Time. Let's take a look at the Grain Hedge Trading Platform and see what this did to move the markets. Corn trading up a quarter penny, soybeans down 17 and a half cents. We'll get into why that moved lower here in just a moment. And Chicago wheat trading unchanged on the day. Let's take a quick look at soybeans. You'll notice that we moved off of the high side, which was resistance. It was the, uh, the resistance level in this downtrend, the overhead resistance between $9.90 and $10. You'll notice that today's report, uh, the reaction to it brought us off of those highs and really looks as though we're gonna continue this trend moving lower uh, and possibly even retesting the lows that we saw back here late September and the very early part of August. When you look at wheat, you'll notice that in reaction to this, we did trade higher in the earlier part of the day. Uh, we went up, we touched on a resistance level that used to be support back in March. Uh, it also was support back in April, but we broke through that uh, late April, early May. Uh, that area, which was support, turned into resistance level. It definitely acted as resistance today. We ended up closing off the day unchanged. Let's take a look at the old crop ending stocks where we came out uh, versus where analysts were expecting. You'll notice corn came in here beating, uh, actually it came in shyer than analyst expectations here at 1.851 billion bushels here. But when you look at where we were in April, you'll notice that we did increase. And a lot of that increase uh, had to do with a cut in, in uh, feed and residual use. That cut in f feed and residual was offset by an increase in exports, but it just wasn't enough. In the end, we did see ha have to see a little bit of a bump here in ending stocks for corn. When you look at soybeans, we did get a decline in ending stocks that had a res that, that was really the result of increased crushings and increased exports. As we know, export sales have been running well ahead of pace here. Uh, we've seen very positive sales over the last couple of weeks during a time period when we typically see either very small sales or cancellations. That boded well here. Uh, that really kind of foreshadowed a relatively positive outlook here for the WASDI report. Uh, and, and you can see that reflected. Demand numbers were increased, carryout was decreased, and it came in below analyst expectations. But it just wasn't enough to lift soybeans. We'll talk a little bit about why that was the case. There's some other numbers that really seem to overshadow this carryout number being uh, slashed. And when you look at wheat here, coming in at 709 million bushels, it was up from April, it was above analyst expectations, uh, and, and, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, but wheat, uh, you'll notice export, uh, exports were a big player here. We've seen cancellations over the last two weeks. Uh, it's totaled up to over 500,000 metric tons. We have fallen below that uh, pace expected to meet USDA expectations in our own export sales model. And it was interesting to see that the USDA recognized this, obviously, uh, paying close attention to the weekly export sales reports uh, and ended up revising exports a little bit lower and actually uh, revising imports a little bit higher here, causing carryout to jump by about 25 million bushels. Take a look at the ending stocks for new crop because I think this really had an important role in why soybeans started trading lower here off that resistance level we were talking about. When you look at ending stocks for corn, you'll notice we came in just a little bit below the average analyst guess. When you look at soybeans here though, coming in at 500 million bushels, that's up from the average analyst guess which expected to see around 443. And then take a look at where we are this year. This year we're at 350 million bushels. And, and, and that's, uh, I mean, this year uh, ending off at th 350. And then of course, new crop at 500, that's a pretty significant change. That was a little bit bearish here, causing some selling following the report. When you look at wheat, we came in on the high side of analyst expectations, also beating the average guess, which was right around 750 million bushels. We also saw an increase in production out of South America. Corn production out of Argentina increased 1.5 million metric tons. That was higher than the average analyst guess. We saw soybeans out of Argentina increase 1.5 million metric tons. That was above the average analyst guess. When you look at Brazil, corn production, we did see that increase here from 75 to 78 million metric tons. 
That's up 3 million metric tons, and that was over analyst expectations. So you look at all that, very positive here. The only thing that we didn't get a revision higher here was soybeans out of Brazil, uh, and that was right around 94.5 million metric tons, basically on par with the analyst expectations. So we did see an increase in South American crop. That also puts some pressure here on the grains. And then when you look at the overall global ending stocks, that was pretty negative. We all, all three of them, corn, soybeans, and wheat, coming in below or above analyst expectations here, causing some selling pressure for the markets. You'll see corn uh, global ending stocks at uh, 191.94 million metric tons. That's above the analyst guess of 182. We had soybeans, 96.22 million metric tons. That's up from 95.17, which was the average analyst guess and wheat over 200 million metric tons here uh, above average analyst guess of only 193 so when you look at all of that that put a little bit of a negative uh, spin here following the report uh, putting some pressure selling pressure on the market soybeans took the brunt of it i think carry out uh, for soybeans in particular was was one of those burdensome numbers that got the market uh, moving and pushing on that sell button if you guys have any questions about today's report or how what it means to you, what it means to your marketing strategy, give us a call. The number is 877-472-4607. I look forward to talking with you here on Wednesday.